Three go. Hello, I'm Troy Deitmeyer, I'm field agronomist for DuPont Pioneer here in Northeast Iowa. Today is June 22nd, and just wanted to give you guys some tips on what you can be scouting for right now in your corn and soybean fields. And right now is a great time to be out and about. You can see a lot of the things that have happened throughout the growing season. And so just kind of wanted to give you a few tips. We're actually standing here in a growing point agronomy trial where we have four different hybrids at four different seeding rates. And we're also gonna do some fungicide trials here. But the one thing that we did do is during emergence, what I did is if the camera wants to come in and we staked plants as they came up uh, every 24 hours. So every different colored flag represents a different 24 hour period that uh, occurred during emergence. And so, um, as we, uh, as we stake these, one of the things that we should be looking for right now in your cornfield is the uniformity in growth stage. And a lot of times that'll tell you also how uniform your crop emerged. And one of the things that we found from three years of this study is if your corn emerged within the first three days of emergence, you generally have the same, same V stage. And why that's important is because we want all of our plants to be flowering at the same time. And so one plant is not uh, out competing the other. So that's one of the things that we found that if you have the same growth stage, you know that your plants probably emerge within the first three days of each other. And we found that as we take those plants to yield, that's about all we need. A lot of times we talk, you hear things like 12, 24 hours, otherwise you lose yield. We just don't find that here in our test plots in Northeast Iowa. So if the camera wants to come in, one of the things that we really should be looking for right now is our root structure. And this particular field actually had a really good windstorm here a short time, about four or five days ago. You can see that we do have a little bit of hook here in the stalk, which told us that this plant did root lodge a little bit. You can see, however, though, we do have really nice brace root development. These, this is some of the things that you need to be looking for out in your field. And also these uh, roots are very fleshy white. We've got a really nice white color to them. So that's something that we need to be looking for. This kind of early uh, lodging that you see here, I guess I don't get too overly concerned about. Another thing that you can do while you're out here in the fields this time of year is dig up a plant and split it in half. And you can still see, we can very easily see where our seeding depth was. And so you can see that this guy was seeded right at about two, two and a quarter inches deep, uh, which is great. One of the other things that you can see when you split the plant is as we the plant gets older, it loses leaves on the bottom side, but you can still tell uh, where like the sixth, uh, sixth node or the sixth leaf is connected to. So we'll have four stacked nodes, and then you'll see this little gap right here. That's the fifth node, and that generally occurs right at the soil surface. And then we have about an inch, inch and a half, and that's the six node. So essentially the six leaf attaches to here and then seven, eight, nine, and that will help you uh, stage, your, stage your corn plants here as they start to lose stuff, or I'm sorry, start to lose leaves. And obviously once we start getting to six through eight leaf stage, then we have to start worrying about uh, herbicide restrictions and things like that. So something to help you stage the, the corn plants. Now on the soybean side, one of the things that we like to look for here in the soybeans is how well is the crop nodulating? And you can see here on the soybeans that I pulled out in this neighboring field, we had a, have a lot of these uh, nodules and they're doing quite well, they're nice and big. And one of the things that I like to do is take one of these nodules and then try to split them in half. And you can see in here there's nice, uh, it looks blood red if you will, or pink. And that's just telling us that these nodules are fixing nitrogen from the air and then turning it into nitrogen for these soybean plants. Another thing to keep in mind as we finish up spraying, today is June 22nd, so actually we're starting to lose day length. Not much today, but it'll start adding up. And our soybean plants know that the days are getting shorter, so if you haven't started seeing flowers, you probably will quite soon. This is where we start getting into the time frame where a herbicide injury can really cost us a lot of yield. So if you haven't gotten uh, that last post-emergent application of herbicide on, be sure that we try to get that wrapped up in the next three or four days so that way we don't lose any more flowers than we possibly have to. The other thing to keep in mind as we do that last herbicide application is a lot of our overlapping residuals that we're using, like the acetochlores, the metallochlores, uh, have restrictions on the number of trifoliates. So be sure to take a look and count how many trifoliates that you have. And so we have one, two, three, four, five trifoliates. This one doesn't quite count yet because it's not completely unfurled. So as long as the leaves are still touching, 
you can't count that as a trifoliate. So uh, products like Outlook, you can only have uh, five trifoliates, and I think um, your acetochlor products, we could probably still be safe on still applying them. So now's a great time to get out into your fields and take a look at what's happened so far. You can evaluate how you've done with your planting operation and then just kind of see if there's any pests. The other thing that we have been starting to see is a fair amount of rootworms. There wasn't any in, in this field here, but the rootworm hatch is going on right now in Northeast Iowa. So I really encourage you to get out in your fields and take a look. If you have any questions, be sure to give us a call and contact your local Pioneer sales representative. Thank you.